Hello everybody. We've got a uh, small group here and a nice setting and we're not going to talk too much and we're going to leave the floor open so feel free at any time during this presentation to, to interrupt and ask a question or make a comment. Um, uh, this is a rather uh, prolific integration that we're going to be talking about. It's out there uh, and uh, if you have some comments or some questions, please again, feel free to interrupt. So my name is Tom Finn. I'm the uh, Director of Market Development uh, for Medigate and I'm joined by Todd Felker. And uh, Todd's background is notable, so I'm going to go ahead and share it on your behalf. Todd was the Chief Security Officer for a nice size health system um, where he was an early adopter of Medigate, Rapid7, CrowdStrike, and probably a bunch of other layered events products that are on display here at HIMSS. Uh, importantly, he oversaw the integrations and now is a senior healthcare strategist with CrowdStrike. So he, he sees the uh, fruits of his labor played out repeatedly across the marketplace. Um, so I'll go ahead and get right into it. Protecting a health systems network from the risks posed by the devices that connect uh, is a cross-functional enterprise class undertaking. And uh, that means, among other things, uh, that this whole IoT versus IOMT versus OT thing has got to go, as does the traditional siloed thinking that bounds the efforts of um, traditional IT information security staff, um, clinical engineering and biomedical professionals. Now the OT specialized staff is coming into the mix. Um, that has got to go if the goal is an integrated, unified approach to asset management and cybersecurity. The only way to get there is getting those people, getting those groups singing from the same sheet of music. Um, and that requires a common frame of reference or a common data foundation. And that's precisely the better get together story that we're gonna talk about to a great extent here. So um, if I take it to the next slide here and we talk about uh, the challenges, well, I think that we've, we've kind of covered them. I'm not gonna... Uh, go into uh, the nuances of medical devices versus uh, the other classes of devices. I think everyone in this group probably understands uh, the challenges, but you know, more importantly at this stage of the game, assuming that you can get your arms around the information, what then are you able to do with it? Because that's where the value is ultimately going to be created. And here's where we want to get to. I mean, these workflows across those traditional siloed groups are already naturally uh, converging. And they need to converge in order to establish the kind of operational leverage required to meet the scale of the challenge as we go forward. And it's deeper than that. When you consider uh, staffing challenges, talent gaps uh, that we're dealing with right now, being able to articulate um, a more exciting career path that makes sense um, in a context where a lot of outdated routines are being eliminated and people can see upskilling occur as a result of technology that's being finally adopted on the non-patient facing side of the house, there's a lot of benefit to be gained. And <clears throat> we talk about now specifically the Better Together story with CrowdStrike and Medigate and Todd's going to articulate it, but it really is pretty simple. It's a, um, a visibility exchange, if you will, where the combination of um, agent-based and agentless um, device data capture um, is pulled together finally, enriched appropriately, and as depicted here, orchestrated effectively across the ecosystem in very specific areas that are foundational to good uh, to to efforts aimed at hardening security infrastructures. At the end of the day, Todd's the one that taught me this. It's really pretty simple. Effective <clears throat> threat processing is a direct function of how well you understand your connected landscape. And our joint efforts together are all geared uh, on that basis. 
Oh, thank you, Tom. So I'm just going to level set for a second here and just kind of, at a high level, explain what, what I think is just such a natural relationship between CrowdStrike, the leader of EDR, the company that stops breaches, is a lightweight sensor that goes on all of your key assets, your endpoints, your servers. Um, everywhere that you have key healthcare data, we protect with an ultra lightweight sensor that when I was you know, CrowdStrike's first healthcare customer back in 2015, I was amazed at the visibility we got on the endpoints, on the servers, every process. The visibility was key. And I thought that that was one of the most transformational products I had ever seen in my security stack until Medigate came along. And Medigate, through a much different way, because we can't put our Falcon sensor on every IoT device. We actually can put it on some, but most IoT devices are not the type of device that you can install an agent on. So Medigate comes along and they put these passive listening devices on your network and they do something that's technical, it's called deep packet inspection and they, they identify all of your IoT and OT devices, or as Tom says, a new term, XOT, all the OT devices, and gives you like this amazing amount of data on these devices, how they're being used, where they're at, and through their ecosystem they provide you all of this really, really key data about these devices and to me it really kind of blew me away and it was about visibility. And I just thought, these two companies, they need to share their data because they both have amazing visibility in two different realms of the network. And so after you know, some conversations with CrowdStrike and stuff, eventually a partnership was formed between Medigate and CrowdStrike and it's been ongoing for years now. And so far, basically we're, CrowdStrike is sending agent information on, on all the devices that have our agent over to Medigate and the benefits are there and that's something I realized even last year using both products. I just came to CrowdStrike in, recently in September but as of last year I was still a CISO and that visibility and that sharing of data was huge. It gave me access to all kinds of information in Medigate that I had never even seen before just because CrowdStrike was sending them device information about the devices, the servers, the endpoints that have our sensor on them. But now that the, the integration has gone to the next level and now that data is coming two way and very soon, so we are partnered with XDR. CrowdStrike is taking EDR and making it XDR, extended detection and response, a true extended detection and response not just hyperbole, we're actually taking and ingesting data from key partners that gives us visibility into the entire ecosystem of your network. And I, I will say that uh, the, all the data that we're getting from Medigate is going to allow us to build at CrowdStrike an entity graph that combined with our threat intelligence and um, and the entire ecosystem of all the, 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 the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of endpoints that we have our agent on and the five trillion events we process a week is going to help us get a complete picture of the, the entire threat on your network in a way that we couldn't do before and that's why we're calling it XDR. So, I just, I wanted to throw in there um, and you know, when you think in terms of visibility, um, think past device attribution. You know, those are table stakes. Think in terms of an understanding of the workflows of the devices, their authorized behavior, um, the relationships they have to other devices. And I'm only bringing that up because that all adds up to an enhanced detection capability which naturally empowers an enhanced incident uh, response capability. So um, I had to get that in, but that's a, that's a big key here because I think visibility has been relegated to discovery and attribution, and that's not the game anymore. It's, it's literally knowing everything there is. The more you know, as I indicated, the more effective you're going to be from a threat processing perspective, which is why companies that tend to be dedicated to the space or are large enough to dedicate to a space tend to be more effective than the cross-functional or cross-industry players, but that's another tangent. Yeah. No, thanks, Tom.
So yes, because they know everything about these IoT devices, their vulnerabilities, which vulnerabilities really matter, right? There's a lot of vulnerabilities that maybe are less important, but which ones could actually allow a device to be compromised. And then, as we're going to talk about in a minute, the, uh, the traffic. What's normal and what's abnormal behavior for these devices? And how does that fit into the attack vector? So that's, that's key. So we got uh, contextual anomaly detection of the traffic. And so here this slide is just kind of showing what some of these lists, these lists in Metagate, they extend way to the left and the right. I mean, these are huge lists. You can create lists of your devices very easily in the Metagate UI. Um, almost looking for anything that you want to know. I found that with this integration I was able to quickly identify, for example, all of the vendor-owned assets that I couldn't control on my clinical network, on my, on my hospital network, um, the ones that I couldn't put CrowdStrike on because the vendor's managing them through like, pick lists in, in Medigate. This dashboard doesn't do it justice, but the, uh, uh, the reporting you could get out of Medigate right now through the integration today is amazing. Um, so this is an example of a device and its communication profile. So one of the, some of the, the out of all the partnerships Medigate has, their integration with the NAC partners, uh, network access control, was very huge because that's one of the, the control planes is now you can control who the IoT devices are allowed to talk to through a, a profile that's created in Medigate and then imported into your NAC solution. And so with this, they know what's normal behavior and they know what's abnormal behavior. So now we can receive this information at CrowdStrike from Medigate about an IoT device that's gone off the reservation. And now we, could, we can potentially act on that in the near future to where now we could tell all the devices that have agents to protect themselves from this device that maybe is not behaving normally because of this intelligence that we're going to receive from Medigate. This is significant because that just expanded um, by leaps and bounds on understanding of the networks on your hospitals, on your delivery care organizations. So when we talk in terms of, uh, and it's a common theme now that Medigate is discussing in a lot of its conversations here at HIMSS, you know, your journey up the device security maturity curve, take a look at where CrowdStrike plays. And so the significance of our integration in accelerating that journey uh, is is evident. I think what's interesting here is once, uh, if, if we regard the discovery and assess phase as something that can be licked uh, in terms of delivery of a dynamic risk reward inventory, which is what we're, we're going for very quickly uh, out of the gate, it enables an awful lot of progress very naturally as I've already indicated. But importantly, and uh, I'll let Todd uh, embellish here, but as we as we move up, at the same time, we're eliminating all of these outdated workflows. There's a tremendous amount of business value that can be achieved here, and I and I would say while almost everyone here understands the need to do something from a external risk management perspective, what's not necessarily understood. Um, are all of those inefficient, outdated workflows also constitute risk to the enterprise? And if they're regarded as such, I think they'll be treated differently. There'll be a greater appreciation for the, the workflow, the value of automation delivered in this relative green field. Yeah, oh, Tom, that's great. And you know, as we, as we look at the, the, new, the new world through the, the lens of what we call XDR, Basically, we, we have a, a, a product that, that is uh, it's completely managed and, uh, and it's doing all the threat hunting for you. So now, if you did have, say, some threat hunters on your staff, they can now get involved in doing what's called security orchestration and response. And so taking this complete package of all the threat activity, all the abnormal activities, all of the the adversary activities happening on your network and now creating an opportunity for your team members to say well when this happens we're going to do this and because they have all of this data and so it's 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 evolving it's taking the endpoint detection and response creating a true extended extended environment where the complete picture is being seen and i think it's a really exciting time to be here and take this integration to the next level 
Yeah, when I look across discover, assess, protect, monitor, optimize, those categories, um, think about it this way. If you want to know where they came from in terms of our thinking, it's really a distillation of NIST categorization and more operationally centric interests that have been articulated by, for example, Gartner and the real-time health system. It's a combination and it gets back to that notion of breaking these traditional silos and getting people that have generally uh, worked separately working together because it's necessary. So as we wrap this up, I don't think I ever give a presentation anymore where I don't talk about business value in this context because I think it's overlooked uh, in a big way. Um, you know, we're talking at a functional level about comprehensive coverage finally. So <clears throat> we're not, you know, my goodness, four years ago, every IoT security vendor in here said they provided comprehensive coverage and IOMT wasn't even in their realm of thinking, okay? Now we really have gotten past IoT, IOMT, and for those of you who are familiar with our acquisition by Clarity, OT is clearly in the mix now as well. And delivering a context that is meaningful across those device classes is where we're going next. Because uh, as a, uh, a CISO said to me when uh, discussing uh, priorities around OT security, he said, I'm waiting for you guys to tell me. I don't know. I need to understand where they fit in care delivery um, across service lines. That's the information I need to develop priorities. So, you know, that flows into this consolidated context rich monitoring of assets. Again, as you evaluate solutions, get past device attribution. Does this product, is it able to unpack a serial number from the communication protocol? If that's the decision criteria, then you're, you're missing the point here. All of these vendors are relatively competitive from a basic visibility perspective. Where they're separated, is in terms of the additional context that is being provided. That's what makes uh, the insights that are being derived now actionable and automated in many cases. Case in point, our integration. Um, you want to cover the, the balance? Sure. Um, so, you know, and this is, this is huge, especially even uh, the OT. I mean, my facilities department at the organization I was at used to think that, rat, that patches were like, a bad word because to them that was a change that could break something that was working. They wanted to just keep HVAC, you know, air conditioning, elevators. If it was working, like don't touch it. So very, very difficult to get patching done on those systems. And now with the integration with Clarity and having uh, some, some context coming around those devices and understanding those vulnerabilities and being able to get those organizations, those parts of your organizations involved in the big picture is huge. Um, Application vulnerabilities. Uh, so that's something that, as as great as Mitigate is in understanding the uh, the picture of how these devices are communicating, they they know only the servers and the endpoints by their IP. But getting the application view from from CrowdStrike will be great. Um, and and I just think that the sky is the limit here. I mean, I, I'm very very excited about this partnership, almost more than than any other in, for healthcare because it, it just contextually, it just adds so much value. So thank you very much. We, we probably have some time for questions if, if, if you have any. Anything? Do we have a microphone for her? Agent list. What did you mean by agent list? Ah, so CrowdStrikes, you know, uh, you know, one of their key things is that we have a very lightweight agent that installs on our endpoint and reports to the cloud. So agentless means if you have these IoT devices that are sometimes very fragile, have very minimalistic operating systems, we may not have a way to put that CrowdStrike agent on the IoT. So those are agentless devices. They're the, all the IoT devices. I, how do you monitor? How do, you, how do you bring unmanaged devices or agentless devices under management? Um, great question. Uh, the term deep packet inspection was thrown out there. We didn't go down that rat hole, but let me explain it to you this way. The heavy lift 
uh, that Medigate was invested in before it came to market was understanding all of these unique and often proprietary protocols that are typical of medical devices. Okay, We wrote the parsers and we unpacked the information. And that's a skill set, not a technology. And um, we have continued to develop that skill set in, in very meaningful ways that have resulted in us being in the market leadership position that we're in. Um, but yeah, I would say generally speaking, and, and now I understand that your question, I think most folks understand you can't install an agent for the reasons that were discussed. The, uh, you know, the, the operating systems are such that they're, you know, the, the processors can send a very defined stream of information. Um, you, can't, you can't hit them with a scanner. Um, you know, these are devices that are connected to patients. But I'll tell you what, part of, you know, obviously the information that we're providing, which is, uh, uh, you know, essential is the status of the device. The difference between whether or not it's on the network and connected to a patient is important, is an important distinction. Uh, so we, we do that as well. And 100%, the information they give us is not only accurate about exactly what the device is, not that it just looks like a glucose meter, it's a glucose meter by this manufacturer and it has this version of firmware on it and these are their vulnerabilities. And not only are these the vulnerabilities, here's the two that are most likely to cause a breach. And so that's the type of information that we're getting and that's why this partnership is so huge. Yes, yes, <clears throat> sensor-based devices, sensor close to the kernel, collecting all kinds of information. That information is now made available to us. Actions taken by that agent, stop a breach for example, just hypothetically, is, would constitute an update to the risk score on that device. We're pulling all that information back in, continuously updating so that you've got a unified view of what's going on. Anything else? Threat detection. Threat detection. Well, you guys kind of invented that space. Yeah. <laughs> so CrowdStrike is a leader in our threat intelligence, as well as uh, the IOCs, the indicators of compromise of the adversary. So we have, with, without a doubt, world class, and, and now that you know, man, so we're the reason that that, uh, that intelligence is what allows us to be so successful with our incident response. So we understand the adversary, in my opinion, better than anybody. So, and you know, with the vulnerability information we get from them, that's what makes this work. We now have world-class threat intelligence combined with now uh, the, the, the best visibility that we've ever seen before. And that's why I opened with a comment about um, effective threat processing as a function of how well you know your connected landscape. At the device level, the more you know, the more granular you can be, obviously, with respect to, uh, let's say, uh, an OS version specific vulnerability that needs to be addressed. You have that intel on the devices in your network that are running that version of the operating system. You can then instantly correlate potentially impacted devices to that threat. And as you're probably aware through various other integrations, spawn workflows that are targeted to those devices to accelerate rem remediation or the application of a compensating control, whatever, the, whatever is necessary. Uh, but again, it's that orchestration that's taking place based at foundation levels on how much you know. Um, and you know that extends to the point I made a few minutes ago to not just something that is device specific but may be predicated on um, an anomalous activity involving devices that should not have a relationship from a communication perspective. That's a value add that we're delivering to CrowdStrike now allowing them to act more effectively.